Hi, I'm Ali Patterson. On this episode of FinTech Finance, we speak with Barnaby Davis from Nationwide to talk a little bit around the new Nationwide app. We also headed to speak with MBNA, where we caught up with Emma Sutton and Gary Watts to talk a little bit around artificial intelligence in customer experience. I also sent Doug McKenzie to speak with Lawrence Whittle from Basado to hear about how their platform is working to enhance the customer and the end user experience. We've been heavily focused on financial services the last uh, three, four, five years, um, and rapidly in the last couple of years we've expanded. So examples such as American Express, uh, Citibank, um, particularly are sort of leaders in this space. But as we've expanded into the UK, into Germany, into France, um, we're just seeing a general expansion of, of interest in this type of technology. Um, we've been focusing a lot on the credit card sector because that's the most competitive sector at the moment, but also now expanding into um, current accounts, into loans, into mortgages, etc. Because all these organisations in financial services are trying to figure out how to better provide a customer experience and we're very much uh, central to that. I wanted to find out how Nationwide was able to detect errors on their app and then implement improvements. Yeah, we're, we're continually monitoring the performance of the app, you know, every, every day. Um, we're looking at all sources of um, information that we have, so customer satisfaction scores, uh, um, app store feedbacks, um, and um, in particular, you can pick up really quickly on social media now where a particular combination of handset and operating system is having a particular problem. So there was a, a period where we were having a real problem with high definition LG phones on Android. What's interesting is when you do finally find the root cause of that and fix it, you get a really nice response from users who uh, are getting a much better experience than they probably got used to. Um, but, it's, but it is 3,000 combinations of handset and operating system now, so it's getting ever, ever harder to remain 100% confident that everybody is getting the exact same service. You've also got degrees of um, ageing in smartphone now. Um, you've got um, very, very variable uh, network strengths around the country in terms of 3G and 4G now. And of course, people have different qualities of, of Wi-Fi as well, so, so figuring out a performance issue it's, it's not, not as easy as it, as it necessarily should be. With customers used to receiving a frictionless service from providers such as Amazon and Google, I wanted to find out what MBNA's approach to frictionless messaging was. One of the things that, that we have done, I think firstly, it was a huge investment from MBNA to put a central customer experience team in place. One of the first things that, that we did was actually look at the, the key customer interactions, but through their eyes. I think as an industry, we're very good at looking at things through a process lens of making sure it's process and it's, it's efficient. But when you truly look at it through, through the customer's eyes, it offers a different lens. So it's about making things seamless and effortless for, a, for our customers. It's looking through, through their eyes, so it's mapping out a, what, what we would see as a very, very simple process of going into a supermarket and you have a trolley full of, of shopping, three children at, at the side of you all screaming because they're hungry. You want that, you hand over your piece of plastic or you use your, your mobile wallet to make that purchase. You want that to be seamless. So it's making sure that things like our authorization strategies are appropriate and relevant to the customer. I also wanted to find out from Barnaby Davis the implication of Touch ID and the security around it. Yeah, so we're, we're leveraging Apple's Touch ID capability, so the, you know, an iOS uh, piece of capability. Um, for the customer experience, they log into their app as they would of the old banking app, so they're still using a number to access the app, and they can continue to use the number if they want to. Um, but the app will ask them if they want to use Touch ID going forward, and from that point on, if they say yes, then they've, they've given themselves permission to use Touch ID. It was the feature that would have been the most mentioned missing feature in our App Store feedback previously. And following launch on Wednesday, it's been probably the most commented uh, feature after the look and feel of the new mobile banking app. And so we're really, really pleased with its uh, response from customers. It's one of those things, because um, I know Chris Popper and RBS, they launched it earlier in the year with yeah. their, um, their, their but, and weirdly, when that happened, I found myself logging on to their app more than... Absolutely, yeah. And there's a really interesting um, nuance around that as well, because I think for all of us who had a Touch ID enabled device, 
I think it felt ludicrous being able to get into your phone really easily and then have other things like your work email application or, or whatever that still required quite a long um, passcode or number being being input. And I think that sort of magnifies the customer dis, um, you know, dissatisfaction with something because you've made it half easy for them and they want you to do your, your side of the bargain, which is change your app to leverage the same technology. Really interesting. At MBNA, we are actually, we work with three card networks, with Visa, with MasterCard, and American Express. And they try to differentiate themselves with different technologies. Um, tokenization is a technology platform that they've provided to their, to their issuers to be able to pass on to their customers um, with the likes of Apple Pay, Android Pay, and, and soon to be Samsung Pay. As a credit uh, lender, we want to give the customer the choice of how they want to interact with MBNA, whether that's in payment through their chosen technology or it's through service, through providing the, uh, the channel of choice for their customers. I think going forward, that's going to be increasingly important. So marketeers have a, a, an incredibly difficult task at the moment in terms of content. Um, as we speak to any marketeer in any financial services company, whether it's London, Paris, New York, um, they have the same issue, which is there's this overload of requirements to develop content. Um, then there's this, bal this balance of it needs to be good content. So really what we're doing is providing these sets of tools to help them become more effective. Um, they have so many things they need to develop, whether it's a new landing page on a website, whether it's a, uh, a Facebook app, whether it's an email. So what we're effectively producing uh, for them is a way to actually significantly increase the, uh, the deliverability, the performance, the, um, just the quantity of content, but also make sure that it's going to really inspire someone. So sort of two benefits. It's, it's really giving them uh, an environment where they can just increase the, the velocity and the volume, but also make sure that it's very impactful in terms of that it delivers what you want, which is to really inspire customers to, to, to buy more, to trade more. Well, with the, the new mobile banking app having just gone live, uh, we now move into sort of phase two and um, we're, we're doing that very differently. I think Agile is used um, and misused a lot to describe how we're developing things, but we've been um, trying Agile approaches with the old mobile banking app, and we were, we were down to a four or five week release cycle, um, which is very, very different to where we were. So we're gonna continue to um, do quick iterative, both operational and customer releases now for the coming 12 to 18 months. We've got a, a really strong roadmap of known demand that we would like to um, get through the mobile banking app. We also know we'll be faced with some unknown things as technology allows um, you know, customers to do different things. So um, I think we'll stay focused. We'll, we'll be watching both our customers and the market very closely. And um, I think the, the, the next big release, I think, from us in terms of difference to what we've done before will be data related and it will be around alerts and notifications and the customer setting parameters by which they can stay more in control of their money. I think that will be very new and very different to anything that I can see in the industry currently. I was eager to find out how Posado's platform can be used to help other brands through the data that they collect. One of the challenges of being flooded in data is to try to figure out what to do with it. So, you know, our view is this is definitely to leverage data um, to the maximum ability, but really to make sure that it manifests itself with decisions. So we're using data to take this randomness out of how people think about content, think about someone writing an email subject line or a Facebook ad. Um, it's very random how people think about it. What we're doing is providing insights on what is likely to work in terms of persuading, um, inspiring a, a customer to react. So we're really using data to take this randomness out and providing it in a very much of an insight basis. So inside our platform, there's a huge, literally billions of combinations of data inputs that we've been gathering over the number of years. But in a very simple sense, we provide insight to people on how they should actually present digital um, ads, digital impressions, digital communications to customers in a very simple sense. So data is clearly important, but it's also making sure that it can be consumed by a person so they can actually understand what that data means. On the next episode of Fintech Finance, we take a look at the world of payments. For this, we catch up with Alipay and Saxo Payments to talk a little bit around the technology behind it. We also catch up with Chris Skinner to get some of his views and opinions.